The Latin phrase terra nullius means land belonging to no one. And that's how the British saw this continent when Captain Cook arrived in 1770. When Cook claimed the entire east coast of what was known then as New Holland, he did so without permission from the local inhabitants. This is the core of what I call unfinished business. It's the most glaring, blistering, weeping sore of, in the flesh of our nation. In 1967, after decades of Aboriginal activism, over 90% of Australians voted yes in an historic referendum to change our constitution. It's all the more significant when you recall that in all the federal referendums since Federation, 29 proposals have been rejected, only five have been accepted. There was a sense of freedom and uh, equality, I think, that our people were, um, were then um, seeking and really thought might happen for them. By the early 1970s, those hopes had faded. Aboriginal activists became frustrated and angry at the lack of political resolve. So we were just called all kinds of crazy names in terms of uh, you know, black power radicals, uh, you know, rat bags, uh, troublemakers, uh, anything that they could think of, they'd call you it. On the eve of Australia Day 1972, the Prime Minister, Billy McMahon, announced that instead of granting native title, Aboriginal people would have to apply to lease their land. Angered by this, a group of black power activists from Sydney made a stand. Early the next day, they erected a beach umbrella on the lawns outside Parliament House and put up a sign which read, Aboriginal Embassy. I think the Tenant Embassy broke the norm in terms of what the world expected from Aboriginal Australia. Before then, we were invisible. After that, we became a phenomena that the world media started to take notice of. In December 72, there was a change of government and the Australian Labor Party swept to power with an ambitious program of social reform including land rights for Aboriginal people. We will legislate to give Aborigines land rights. Not just because their case is beyond argument, but because all of us as Australians are diminished while the Aborigines are denied their rightful place in this nation. When Eddie Mabo discovered he had no legal rights to his homeland of Murray Island in the Torres Strait, he began a 10-year legal challenge that would have far-reaching ramifications. For the first time, Australia has recognised the legal existence of Aborigines prior to white settlement. The case is a moral victory, as well as having great significance for land rights. For generations, the Indigenous voice has spoken its truth. It has changed our country. But the suffering continues, and the struggle for that rightful place remains.